What do you see or imagine when you think about death and what comes after it? Get your coffee. On the morning of October 10th, 2016, I got a call from a friend and member of our church in that morning whose husband was in the last moments of his battle with pancreatic cancer. My wife and I, we drove the 20 or so minutes up to their home and right as we got to their home, we went into their master bedroom and I sat down next to my friend Rich and I looked into his eyes and I prayed for him one last time and he breathed two more breaths and then as they say breath became air and Rich moved into heaven. About six or eight months before he died I read a book called Imagine Heaven by a pastor in Texas named John Burke. And in the book, Burke talks about heaven and the biblical representations of it, but he also talks about near-death experiences. He includes a number of people's accounts of their near-death or out-of-body experiences in his book. Now, I've been a Christian for as long as I can remember. I grew up going to church and I prayed to receive Christ at a very young age, but heaven has always seemed far away. And many times in my life, I've had the thought, I don't want to die. I have so many things that I want to live for and to experience here. But I remember reading Burke's book six or eight months before my friend Rich died. And when I was about halfway through the book, I had the thought, as far as I can tell, for the very first time that I can remember ever having the thought, I thought, I really want to go to heaven. For some reason, the chronicles of the near-death experiences in the book made heaven all the more real and tangible to me. If possible, it became more glorious. I recommended that Rich read the book, and he did. And before he died, we had several long talks where we talked about the book. I remember that after one of our long conversations where we we sat, many times we'd sit for three or four hours and talk about all kinds of different things. But after one of our long conversations where we talked about heaven and we talked about this book, Imagine Heaven, I found myself thinking, Rich gets to see heaven before me, far before me, as far as I can tell, he gets to go and experience this wonderful glory. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul writes about an unnamed individual that had what we would probably call today a near-death experience. There are many people who believe and teach that Paul was likely talking about himself in somewhat of a veiled manner. I think that that is possible. Paul did nearly die on a number of occasions before he actually died. At one point, an angry mob beat him up and nearly stoned him to death, leaving him thinking that he was dead. But he didn't die. He he did revive. Perhaps it was at that moment that Paul was caught up into the third heaven where he saw paradise and he heard inexpressible words. It is possible that the person that Paul mentions in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 wasn't him, but someone had that experience. And research suggests that one in every 25 people in the U.S. have had a near-death experience. That's 13 million people. That's phenomenal, if you think about it. I've talked with a few people in my church that have quietly shared with me their near-death experiences. I say quietly because many times People are afraid that you will think they're crazy if they tell you what happened to them. But the accounts that I've heard personally or the ones that I've read, they are amazing. And they often describe a paradise, a place of total peace and consummate joy that 
isn't some ethereal, intangible, cloudy, vapory place, but rather a substantial, real place in which they experienced greater sensual awareness than they'd ever experienced before. And one person's account referenced in Burke's book, Imagine Heaven, the person says that this otherworldly place that they found themselves in, it felt more real than anything they had ever felt in this life. They felt more alive than they ever had before. Another person said of their heavenly experience that it made their earthly existence seem like a foggy dream, like when you wake up from a dream and you can kind of barely remember what happened in the dream or where you were in the dream. The person said that arriving in this place that they described as heaven made this world seem intangible and like a foggy dream. What they were experiencing, they said, was far more real, far more tangible. They felt far more alive than they had ever known. Near-death experiences are fascinating, especially when you read the accounts of them in medical or scientific journals. This is not just something that you come across from people of faith. It comes sometimes from people who have said that they don't really know that they believe in God. I've listened to podcasts and watched videos where skeptical, unbelieving cardiologists describe the account that they have received from some of their patients about the things that these patients experienced while they were technically, clinically dead. And yet in their clinical dead state, they were able to detail information about the operating room where they were receiving the procedure that they could not have known apart from having a true out-of-body experience. What does this tell us? At the very least, it tells us that there is a lot more that we do not know about consciousness and death and that the world is far more mysterious than we are often willing to accept or admit. I've been at the bedside of a number of people as they breathed their last breath in this life. My wife is a critical care nurse. She sees those final moments many times a month, especially over the last year and a half. And I can tell you, and my wife has told me, that there is a difference in the way that people approach death when they have faith that this is not all there is. I certainly saw that with my friend Rich, and I'm certain that I will see him again someday. And I'm quite sure that he's having a hell of a time in heaven right now. Something to think about. We'll see you next time.